Welcome to Wise Talk. It's time to pull up a chair and join the conversation. Here's your host, Audrey D. Carson. Welcome to Wise Talk, where we discuss everything for, about, and because of women. What sustains us, what aggravates us, and most importantly, our purpose and how we heal the nation and ourselves. A little bit about Wise, women's innovative social enterprises made up of a combination of nonprofits and for profits led by Black women. Uh, that will uplift community and develop in community to bring excellence in community. So this monthly podcast allows us to stay connected to you and keep the community informed. I'm Audra D. Carson, and my guests today are Elizabeth Whitaker Walker, and her her resume bio is extensive, and just I'm just going to share a little bit about her and have her say hello to you guys. Elizabeth is an innovator, strategist, and coach who believes in people and our power to build a just and equitable world. She is the founder of Raymond Whitaker Design, LLC, a consulting firm committed to equity, leadership, and organizational development. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Saturday. (laughs) Yes, 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 yes. Welcome to Wise Talk. You're welcome. Secondly, uh, we have my community sister, Tawana Petty. Uh, She is a mother, organizer, poet, author, and facilitator. She has been writing poetry for over 35 years and has spent over 15 years teaching poetry as visionary resistance. Welcome, Sister Tawana. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be with y'all. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's get into it. You're welcome. Thank you so much to both of you guys. Um, so I have the first question, and that, that question is going to be directed at you, Elizabeth. Okay. Um, so actually, you know, ladies, let's talk about sisterhood. You know, obviously, it's an important uh, part of our culture. We often refer to each other as sick sister. We do it in a lovingly way. Uh, we, you know, to acknowledge our love and admiration for one another. Elizabeth, you even belong to a sisterhood. So what is that sisterhood? Um, so I do belong to a formal sisterhood, which mm-hmm. is Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, founded on the illustrious campus of Howard University in 1913 on January 13th. Um, but I also am part of many other sisterhoods. Mm-hmm. Um, I am part of, you know, a sisterhood. You know, I think about my workout group. We're called the Persistas. Um, <laughs> you know, I think about my close, um, close-knit circle of friends. Mm-hmm. I think about, of course, my sorority sisters. Um, and if you are a Black woman, um, if you are a Black woman specifically living in America, um, sisterhood is like the fabric, the glue that helps keep us strong. Mm-hmm. Um, our sisters help us take our braids down. Right. Our sisters make sure, oh no, she didn't, doesn't walk into the wedding. Mm-hmm. Um, our sisters, <laughs> you know, our sisters stand in the gap. Right. Um, but I think also, um, you know, our sisters also give us business referrals mm-hmm. and like advocate for us on the job. But there's so many roles, you know, mm-hmm. that our sisters play in our lives. Oh, for sure. For mm-hmm. sure. And, you know, we can ex- expound on that. I don't have any biological systems, right? And so when I begin to do work in, in community and become an advocate in community, right? So I'm giving reverence to those who are older than me, you know, big sister, you mm-hmm. know? Um, I'm, I was looking for people to call me big sis, mm-hmm. right? To get that feeling of love and what that means between us, right? Yes. Um, you talk about, you, you kind of you know, started talking about the importance. Um, in this time, you know, after the pandemic, we're still in the pandemic, you know. Um, Tawana, you know, what was the lifeline? What is the lifeline with you as a relationship? Yeah, um, I'm glad you mentioned the pandemic, right? So I mm-hmm. live in an apartment on the east side of Detroit, mm-hmm. and there are a lot of elder women in my building who've been in the building for 
decades. Mm-hmm. Right. And um, and that's one of the things that I saw immediately was the sisters looking out for each other, like you have enough toilet paper, mm-hmm. you have water, like what do you need? And so it really melt, made me feel like I wasn't alone, even though we were in isolation. So just dropping off tissue at people's doors, you know, making sure folks had different things. So it was like a little community mm-hmm. of sisters. Of course, we looked out for the brothers too, but right. but it was really like the women in the building. Like you would come downstairs to get your mail, mm-hmm. and there would be boxes of food just in the hallway. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yes. it was just a it was just the energy where it was like, I know we're going to make it through this. That's mm-hmm. right. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And 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 to that point, I think you us uh, Elizabeth, you alluded to you know us in community. For me. Um, I look forward to the careful correction, Mm -hmm. right? If I'm out here and, you know, I'm not representing (laughs) as I should, you know, um, I'm open to those who I've, um, you know, created an intimate relationship with, you know, that's like family, uh, to allow them to correct. Where are you guys at? Are you correct? Are you working on it? You know, what does that look like? Well, one of the, the, the thing that actually popped into my head mention correction, um, and I'll make the connection. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I think about Delta Sigma Theta, our mission statement is Delta Sigma Theta is a sorority incorporated is an organization of college educated women mm-hmm. committed to the constructive development of its members and to public service with a primary focus on the black community. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Delta's we're known for serving and making things happen. Uh, we're the largest black uh, sorority in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you talk about, I mentioned the constructive development of its members, mm-hmm. right? And so when I think about the the, the elders, um, my elder sisters in our in our sisterhood, mm-hmm. our, our elders let us know when we're not right. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. everything from, um, you know, you looked a little tired at our committee meeting. Um, are you getting enough rest, baby? Mm. Um, AKA. I saw you doze off, <laughs> but also lovingly checking, is everything good? Right. Right. Mm. To, um, you know, you said, you said you committed to, you know, I think about some of our programs coming up. You said you committed to doing X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. We're a volunteer organization. Right. Like we, and so that correction, you can't have a sisterhood last over a hundred years right. without that correction, without checks and balances. Right. When I think about my homegirl, yesterday I called um, a friend who's not a Delta, one mm-hmm. of my, my my sisters, hey Janice. Um, and uh, I was like, sis, I'm going to this event. I need your honest opinion. Mm-hmm. Is this hairstyle working? She was like, um, you need to call her back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, like, right, um, right. but love it's cute, right. but this is what I'm used to. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, um, and so I think our sisters and I, you know, I mentioned like physical stuff, but mm-hmm. also like, uh, when I think about, you know, as an organizer, when I think about, um, the work, uh, that we're doing in community, when mm-hmm. I think about the stakes, right. Mm-hmm. If you don't do what you say you're going to do, Come on. Now. What are the consequences? Yeah, right. And so like we we talk about iron sharpens iron, but literally like sometimes our survival is dependent upon our ability to follow principle critique. Yes. Hmm. Yes. Say yes. That. Yeah. So Tawana, I mean, you know, you're out there, you know, this this activist. Right. And and you're, um, uh, you know, you're front facing. Right. And you're in some 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 serious situations um, and you uh, uh, in your activism, you know, it's not always cute and everybody doesn't always want to hear what you have to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so with that, that correction, yeah. even though you're working in, 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 in purely being led, what does that correction look like for you from a sister when when you're out here in, in the trenches? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna say like like Liz just said, like mm-hmm. it um survival yeah. relies upon that correction. Yeah. Look, I used to come out here and, and years ago when I didn't know any better and think like I'm speaking for all the black people. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And mm. so it it took some elder women who've been in this struggle for decades saying, right. like, baby, you we we you know, we're we need to move in lockstep, but we're not a monolith and right. everybody's not gonna experience these systems the same way you do. So right. you're gonna have to step back mm-hmm. and speak from 
I statements. Mm-hmm. This is how I'm experiencing this. This is what I have witnessed. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you navigate in that way. And so that correction was not only safe for me, safer for me, mm-hmm. but it also was a, a critical thinking analysis that I needed in order to stay in this struggle. Right. And so um, I, that from that, I learned how to bring others with me mm-hmm. and ensure that there were other voices who were, whether it agreed with me or not, were able to have their voice in the same space and articulate why they might feel this particular way. Mm -hmm. And so the goal is to, you know, grow our souls at the end of the day. Right. Right. Um, But yeah, that correction Mm -hmm. keeps you humble. Yeah. And it's important. Mm -hmm. And so like, I find myself checking in a lot, like, okay, this is how I feel. This is what I'm thinking. This is what I've written. This is the, you know, initiative or uh, action Mm -hmm. that I'm engaged in. What do y'all think? Because I live here and you live there. Right. And, and, and to be honest, now I, you know, have a little bit more income. Mm -hmm. So I'm not in the same circumstance that I was when I first got really active in movement, right? Where I, you know, was wondering what I was going to eat tomorrow. Now Mm -hmm. I kind of know what I'm going to eat tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I still have to make sure I'm checking in with the sisters who still don't know what they're going to eat tomorrow. So Mm -hmm. it's so much, um, it's an active correction and checking in that you have to do if you're really going to do this work on a holistic level. Right, right, right. And I just want to make sure uh, for our audience that I ground this in the the subject matter for this episode, honoring the role of Black women in community. So I want to ground that that statement that we're honoring Black women Mm -hmm. in community. Um, So we talked about ways in which sisterhood works. Mm -hmm. Um, What about when it doesn't work? You know, what does that look Mm -hmm. like? Um, you know, for me, uh, with 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 sisterhood that doesn't work is um, when you uh, look to collaborate, right? And you come and you bring pure, you know, a pure intention, right? Mm-hmm. And you you're looking for someone to match that energy, mm-hmm. right? And you know, initially it's oh yes, let's do this, let's do this, and then we get to the point where there's some other things that 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 rise up to the to the surface um and it impedes the work yeah. and it's that's the, it's so heartbreaking for me because it's not about the individual when we're doing this work mm-hmm. right and so when i say sister you know i'm not out here calling everybody sisters mm-hmm. um but when i call you sis um it's coming from a heart and it's, it's coming from a, a a beautiful place and so for me that's been, you know, what's lacking, mm-hmm. where people n- are not able to accept it, mm-hmm. accept this, you know, collaborative nature, uh, and it, it 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 impedes the work of everybody, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That because we're all interconnected. So, what about you, Tawana? What what do you? How do you see, you know, sisterhood? What's lacking in the sisterhood in our community? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's challenging and heartbreaking sometimes. I'll be honest, but mm-hmm. once you have a systemic understanding of the systems we're up against that try to keep us from being unified, mm-hmm. um, you can see it in a more wholesome way. Mm-hmm. Um, so I used to be like, oh, these people cut off, you know, mm-hmm. uh, sis, bye. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Now it's like I might not spend as much effort pursuing the relationship, but Mm -hmm. I'm still going to wish you well. Oh yeah. And so, you know, I, I have grown tremendously in that regard because I understand what, what the challenges are. I understand why sometimes there's this level of competition that's unwarranted and Mm -hmm. unnecessary Mm -hmm. um, because we have been, you know, forced. I I don't want to say oppressed. I want to say because we have been marginalized, for so long, mm-hmm. especially black women, mm-hmm. um, sometimes it feels like there's only three opportunities. Mm-hmm. And so because it feels like there's only three opportunities, you in this like rat race trying to beat each other down to get to that one of three, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but I think the more we recognize that when we move together, right. that those opportunities become more visible, um, then we can have more wholesome relationships. But I have set some boundaries for myself Ooh, that I did not yes. always have. I was a people pleaser, mm-hmm. being mm-hmm. wounded quite often and, and and experiencing even in sisterhood like folks that were really damaging. And I just kept returning to the table, kept returning to the table. So now I'm at a point in my life where it's like, 
I'm going to put that energy out there. If I don't feel the energy reciprocated, mm -hmm. then I'm going to wish you well. I'm going to pray for you. Yeah. I'm going to put you on my altar mm -hmm. and then I'm going to move on to more whole, holistic relationships. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's a good um, entree into um, the superwoman complex, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> You know, Liz be, is superwoman. <laughs> um, <laughs> both of you are superwomen. Um, you know, so how do you balance that, right? So we we have this superwoman, you know, nationally, you know, here with some a lot of the things that go wrong with elections and community. You know, black women, they, you know, we have some ingenuity in us. It's innate in us, and we swoop in and we make stuff right, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, so. With this superwoman, you know, entrepreneur, grandmothers, wives, girlfriends, um, you know, is that a title that we revere or is it a burden? Um, <laughs> you know, both. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, like, so I, I recently bought a, a, a workout shirt that said Black women are superheroes. Mm -hmm. And I bought the shirt. I remember hesitating to buy the shirt mm -hmm. because on the one hand, I'm like, ooh, when I be, you know, doing them crutches, I need to <laughs> tap in. You know, I got to right. tap in. You got to tap but, in. But also, like, I also believe in softness, mm -hmm. like, in life, like, yeah. and that Black women are worthy and deserving of the softness Come on um, of in the sweetness of yeah. life, right? Yeah. Um, there's a, a, a movie, it's not about this, but I like the title, it's called Azucar y Amargas, like, it's the, the sour and the sweet, the mm. bitter and the sweet. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think about when I think about this title, right. um, of being a superwoman, like, you know, can it be more like, like a super team? Cause if you're yeah. like a super woman, you know, you, you flying, you know, right. you like you out there, like right. trying right. to do your thing. Um, but you get tired. What you if, what exhausted. happens when your wings get tired? Right. Um, mm. and so like, I like the idea and embrace the idea of the power and the divinity mm -hmm. that's inherent in black women. And that, indeed is super yes um however like it's not we should not always be the ones saving the day are we capable of saving it yes absolutely mm -hmm. without question mm -hmm. with our eyes closed right? right um however we shouldn't have to save the day we right. do not exist um on an island like right. mm -hmm. we exist in community with people and so we need each other as black women but we need our brothers yes we need other folk yes. you know <laughs> yes holding it down mm -hmm. so yeah yeah. And so Tawana, you know, right. expound on that. You know, is it a is it a curse? Is it is it a blessing to have that emblazoned on tattooed on all our chests, mm -hmm. right? Superwoman, black superwoman. I, I want to just say me too. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes, like you you want to be seen, right? You mm -hmm. want to be valued, you want to be um recognized for all your efforts and contributions and how much you are. Uh, putting into this struggle for like our full humanity but mm -hmm. also too I want to take that cape off yeah and go sit down and let somebody else do all that stuff mm -hmm. um and so yeah I agree it you know I, I want to be seen for the strength that I bring but I, sometimes I want to be seen for the softness that I bring too right and I I personally struggle with feeling like I'm ever seen as soft Ooh. you know and Ooh. so that's a, it's a challenge. Ooh. It's a super challenge. Um, right. And so, yeah, there are times when, you know, there's an elegance or a daintiness that I, I don't even know if I can pull out of myself mm -hmm. because I've been so in, in some struggles that are really male dominated. Like I work in tech, right. I'm in like these different fields where it's like predominantly men, predominantly yeah. white men at yeah. that. Um, and so, yeah. It's very difficult. So the moments that I do get to throw me a cute little scarf on yeah. and try to, yeah. um, I really value that. But it's not often, yeah. if I'm honest, it's yeah. not often. And sometimes people misunderstand the softness, right? Mm. Like they, they, I'm like, yes. <laughs> right. what, what's, what, what's, what, uh, what did Toby say? Try Jesus, not me. Because right. <laughs> I will throw these hands. You right. Know? Um, and it's it's a, this balance that yeah. we we play as women, as mm -hmm. mothers, mm -hmm. as wives, as partners, all the all the sisters, all the things like finding you know finding that balance. We have to balance our own self perception with That's the right. world's self perception plus our situation 
or self, you know, the situational perception. Then there's a survival, like what you have to present in order to literally survive in those spaces, survive on the block, survive in your homes. Um, And that's super in it. The fact that we can do that is super, but we shouldn't have to do all that. We should be able to be. Right. And and, and to that point of, you know, the daintiness, right? I wear steel toes and I drive a a pickup truck called Idris. Did y'all get that? (laughs) Idris is the pickup truck's name, right? Um, you know, so I, I, I do dirty work. I, you know, some of the work I've, I've thrown tires, right. You know, cleaning up tire blight. And, and so folks see me in that regard. Um, Mm -hmm. yet, you know, of course it's another side to me. Right. right. Um, and being able to balance that and even, you know, um, within myself. Right. Um, I, I, someone that I grew up with said, you know what? They've known me my whole life. They say, you work like your dad, mm. but you act like your mom. Mm. And it's true. I, I mean, I, I work. I want to, I don't want to talk. I want to do the work. That's right? right. And so, you know, finding that balance within myself, like, Yes, I'm dainty and girly, mm-hmm. you know, yet I'll, I will lace up these <laughs> steel toes yep. if the community needs me to do something. Right. So, yeah. Um, so we're going to move along. We're still grounding this in honoring the role of Black women in community. So this next piece, um, you know, we're going to start with you, Tawana, with these questions. And, you know, of course, it's going to lead to conversation. Um, so. To want to you do it all, but there are even times that you feel unseen in the community and overlooked as a woman. I mean, we, we've talked about that. You know, how do we as women, especially Black women in Detroit mm-hmm. um, and anywhere, define and maintain our space and community as women, mothers and entrepreneurs, um, you know, doing that work? You know, people were talking about self-care, right? You know, self-care. Tawana, you know, what does it what does it mean and how do you maintain your space? You know, you in IT, white male dominated space, right? Mm-hmm. How do you in community, you know, how do you maintain, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I work, I work in it's weird because I work in this field of like data ethics, right? Mm. So I'm pushing tech companies, governmental inst- entities corporations and institutions to be ethical in their artificial intelligence development and et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so, yeah, that's a whole nother world. So that's Mm -hmm. why you find me doing poetry a lot. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, But I will say one thing that I've learned to internalize is that there's a fine line between invisibility and humility. Mm. And so, you know, I I would enter so many spaces, like, I'm just going to sit here and like, you know, if, if, if folks call on me, then, you know, I'll have something to say. And, um, you know, I don't want to seem angry and mad and, or I don't want to seem pushy. And, Mm -hmm. um, and then what would happen is work would be produced that I know that I contributed to, or I authored, or I designed, or it was my ideas. Mm. And it would be out circulating in this, in the world Mm -hmm. for years with no attribution to me. Mm -hmm. Um, And I see that every, I see that so often. Um, I can't name the number of times. And then when I go to seek funding Mm -hmm. or resources, they say, oh, we just funded, you know, such and such. And I'm like, that is my work, you know? And so it's like, even though I want to put things into the world and I want to pay it forward and Mm -hmm. I want everyone to benefit from, you know, my contributions, Mm -hmm. I would like to benefit from my contributions as well. And so it's challenging. Mm -hmm. It really is challenging in that work. Um, Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm I'm trying to internalize also that what's meant for me is meant for me. So it's a contradiction at times. It's like, okay, Tawana, if it's meant for you, it's meant for you. Mm -hmm. But also there is a fine line. Right. right? And so, yeah, that that's it's an ongoing struggle. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. And and to that point, Elizabeth, you know, what how do you maintain, you know, how do you take Ooh. up space in this world? Um, I think the first thing that comes to mind, I think about my spiritual practices. Mm-hmm. Um, I think about um, my time with God in the morning to first like that's my first uh, affirmation, mm-hmm. you know, like being reminded um, of this divine connection, this divine life force that is in me and that's That's consistently growing within me. Yes. If I stay centered on that, Mm. I mean, hate is going to hate. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And then uh, the other thing I do, I think about, um, 
I think about my ancestors, like mm-hmm. my, I, like uh, they're here. Our ancestors are like That's literally, right, and I call their names. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, they are they are present. So any room that I walk into, yes. any, and I find strength and literal literal power mm-hmm. um, in that. Mm-hmm. I also think about um, like exercise and movement and working out. Mm-hmm. I used I grew up thinking that, you know. The only people who worked out were people who were trying to get big muscles. And that was, you know, that wasn't my aspiration. Um, it wasn't until, you know, I, I hit a certain age and stuff was aching a little bit like it wasn't before. I'm like, oh, that's why, you know, and so that that the exercise, that movement, doing yeah. that in community with my sisters is mm-hmm. incredibly powerful. Mm-hmm. Um, those are the things that help me stay grounded. Those are the places where I find fuel. Sometimes just being quiet outside. Yeah. Um, being connected, um, you know, to the, the natural physical world, Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, there's, there's life all around us that Mm -hmm. when we touch a tree, like that we're touching life and there's, Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to get too into it, but like, you know, these are your your people. We all in. But like, that's where I find. And so when I walk into a space and you know, someone's dealing with some cognitive dissonance and trying to make mm. that my problem, mm. or someone is, you know, challenging my right to be in a room yeah. or challenging something I say because I'm a woman or mm-hmm. because, um, you know, I'm black or because mm-hmm. of whatever the because of, because I'm a mother, because I'm a, mm. you know, um, I'm like, well, that's not what my God says about me. Come on. Yeah. That's not who my ancestors pray. My, I, Do you know who my ancestors that's are? Sure. Like, do you know who Listen. I walk with? Teach. Like, every Listen. day who are, like, right here. Do you yeah. know my God? Like, Teach. and so you can you can say what you're going to say. Um, there's one of my community mothers, my big sister, Mama and Gia Kai. Mm. Uh, hey, Mama and Gia. Uh, <laughs> yes. You know, she said something um, a few years back. And it has stuck with me. And she says, um, and I'm going to paraphrase, but she basically said, um, speak to your, like, go to where you are trying to go and mm-hmm. speak speak to yourself and call yourself there. Ooh. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, call yourself Ooh. to where A you're, word. Where you're yes. trying to be. And so, so long as I do those things. Yes. Um, I'm good. I'm mm-hmm. not saying that there won't be challenges. Um, but when we look at the challenges, any challenge that we might have right now in life, any challenge, literally any challenge, when we like zoom out, if we think about ourselves like in our home, then we zoom out to our city, then we zoom to our state, then our country, world, space, and we're looking down at that problem from space within the expanse of the universe. Yeah. Like my creator who created our creator who created like this whole universe. If all that can happen, why am I worried that this problem isn't going to get resolved or what this person over here thinks of me? That hyper perfectionism is a dimension of white supremacy. Mm, come on now. Come on. Um, and so we have to resist that <laughs> yes, in every way yes, we can. Yes. yes. And, and, and so Ooh, I'm, I'm so high now. I need now. a sip of water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so high now. Um, from from what both of you guys have imparted, and so you know, you know, some of the work that I do, I clean up blight and community. But the other part is, I'm I'm able to do you know ad- adaptive landscaping for Black people, right, mm-hmm. to offset climate change. And you mentioned like touching trees. Yeah. And, you know, I and, and you know, I, sometimes I'm I'm able to get up in the morning and do some earthing. You know, and I'm in the in in my backyard and I'm letting Most High, you know, speak to me. Right. I feel like birds, you know, they come and land and I'm like, good morning, Mr. Bird, yep. you know, <laughs> yeah. and butterflies and stuff. And that grounds me. And then, you know, with my spiritual evolution, um, you know, I, I try to operate in 5D, you know, before, you know, going into space. Right. right. And going doing that soul work and letting most high creator, everything God, you know, uh, pour into me because we need to be insulated. We're going into these spaces. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I became a trustee um, for my college in Olivet, Michigan, and going that way, I'm, I'm traveling through some spaces that where people don't want to see me. That's right. And so, you know, arming ourselves with what we know yes. uh, that can insulate us yes. um, from the ridiculous ugliness, bru- brutality of, of this uh, white supremacist society. Mm-hmm. You know, here in you know, in the United States. So I appreciate you guys. I really do. Mm. Um, so 
you know, has either of you uh, been grouped into the angry black woman title? <laughs> uh, does it matter? Does that dis divisively and effectively diminish our work? You know, that angry black woman. How do you, what, what do you feel about that? Yeah, I've been called angry and I was, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, I mean, there are times when I've been called angry when I wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, just for being assertive. But now I, I've learned to accept that good. So if you think I'm angry, then steer clear and do what's right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I've learned to internalize that that's a superpower, as y'all were talking about yes. earlier. Like, so, you know, before I was ashamed of it. I was ashamed of it. You know, like I didn't want to be because of, there's such a long history of mm -hmm. demonizing us for and a continuous cycle mm -hmm. of demonizing us for having that type of energy. Mm -hmm. um, but that type of energy moves mountains. And yes. so I am perfectly fine with folks thinking I'm angry because there's a lot to be angry about. And I'm also moving in action. So it's not like I'm just angry. <laughs> right. I'm 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 actively in process to move those mountains that have pissed me off yeah so yeah so i'm i'm fine with it mm -hmm. do as you may yes. <laughs> say as you want yes elizabeth what what how do you feel about the angry black woman I, title I, I you know i remember first encountering that title in high school mm -hmm. i went to an elite high school my that yeah, I grew up literally like a few houses down from where we are right now, mm -hmm. and got an awesome opportunity to go to this unique high, this elite high, quote unquote elite high school. It's good school, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, like that, I remember getting in. I remember in tenth grade, um, we were talking about apartheid, and um, and we we're talking about apartheid, and we were talking about colonialism, mm. and I remember one of my classmates was saying that colonialism was good for Africa. And, you know, I was like, was slavery good for black people too? Well, you wouldn't be here, Liz, if, if, and I, oh. I, you know, I checked her and I mean, I, I always, we talk about Baba Malik Yakini talks about principal critique, mm -hmm. right? Hey, Baba Malik. <laughs> and um, so how I responded, it was in a principal way. Um, but she, you know, the tears, she started, I remember she started crying and I'm like, I'm talking the same way I'm talking to you all right now. Mm -hmm. But there was something that was so, oh, oh, and yes, at first, so that was the first time I encountered it. And because she cried, right, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the teacher wanted to talk to me after class and I'll just say despite it was addressed. Despite what she said to you. Despite mm -hmm. what she said to me, mm -hmm. um, you know, it was addressed. Shout out to my grandmother who uh, took care of that. May she rest in peace. Mm -hmm. Um. But the thing that I, I think, I think some people call it angry. They what they're seeing is power, hmm. right? Uh -huh. What they're seeing is power. Mm -hmm. They're seeing we were talking about the power, divine power. We we're talking about the power of our ancestors. They're seeing that may manifest. And the reason I think they call it, you know, sexism, you know, some of that is misogyny. Mm -hmm. Some of that is racism. Mm -hmm. Some of that they can't acknowledge that they fear our divinity. Mm. And so if they call it angry, then it looks misplaced. Come on. Then when we talk about like, you know, men are allowed to be angry. Men are socialized to be angry, mm -hmm. especially I should say some men, white men are allowed to be angry. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and it's even thought about like is powerful. And I'll even say, you know, like white women in the workplace aren't allowed to show, are allowed to emote the same way that white men are. I'll give, you know, that happens too. Mm -hmm. But this angry black woman, this, this, this power that mm -hmm. people see, they fear, they don't know what to, they don't know, they can't, can't they can't control it. Mm -hmm. Right. They um, can't show that they're, men can't show that they're, that they fear this divinity. Mm -hmm. right. um, women won't, acknowledge non-black women won't always acknowledge um that how can i say it black power is uh, the power of women is respected in the black community mm -hmm. in ways that other communities like we're black folks we're used to powerful women like that's what yeah, we do that's exactly. who we are we mm -hmm. that's who we produce you right. know what i'm saying yeah. But that isn't the case in, in many old other cultures. Mm -hmm. And so when people encounter that, mm -hmm. that, that, that difference, they, they, I think some people aspire to have, have that thing, but because 
only black women can be black women. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, well, we're going to call it this and we're going to make the, this bad thing that we. And so I wouldn't say for me, I wouldn't say that it's something that um, that I am. I don't embrace that title because I think it's a, a false I, I think people call it that because they don't they don't call it the divine. They don't call. But in terms of the actual power and the divine yeah. every day, every day and watch out because it's here and it's going to be here and it's growing. <laughs> That's you know? right. Yeah. Ooh, growing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so, ladies, uh, when we when we talk about honoring the role of black women in community, um, what 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 has hurt you? What has hurt you um, in doing this work? Um, either one of you want to speak on that? (sighs) (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I mean, um, definitely those moments of broken sisterhood, Mm -hmm. um, or perceived broken sisterhood. Mm -hmm. Um, those are painful moments. Um, and any, and to be honest with you, any, breaking of relationship between me and other black people. Mm-hmm. I mean, humanity in general, yes. but black people specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, those are wounds uh, whenever friendships dissipate mm-hmm. and uh, different things. And, you know, and especially if, if I feel like I can tap into this systemic reason, but I can't reach, yeah. you know, the, the person who I've had the fracture with mm-hmm. um, those are challenging. You yeah. know, it's like I, I have stepped into this uh, self-realization mm-hmm. uh, and critical self-analysis that allows me to understand these things. But it doesn't mean I'm not human mm-hmm. um, and that I don't still feel the impact. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah. And then I would say th- just the trauma and the pain that we as black people still have to fight for, mm-hmm. um, you know, our dignity and humanity, basic human rights, things like that. So those things are painful. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm also still optimistic uh, because I know how powerful we are, like Liz was just saying. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a it's a balance. Uh, the contradictions have been heightened. Yes. Our power is growing. Mm-hmm. Um, and those who wish to do us harm are in fear, which is why we see more rage. Yes. Um, and so there's pain and power. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, that's what I'll say. Yeah. And, you know, ladies, um, <clears throat> the whole idea of wise, right, is is to uplift. So we're going to move to, you know, talking about healing mm-hmm. and talking about solutions. Mm-hmm. So um, I got a couple questions here about healing. How do we keep our wits and still fight the good fight, get into good trouble? How do we take care of ourselves and others? How do we support each other? You still find balance. What's needed? What's working? Hmm. You know, so let's converse about that. Um, good trouble. Hmm. What is that? When when you hear that, Liz, how does that resonate with you? Um, when I think about good trouble. <laughs> so one of my uh, homegirls, <laughs> she, well, my closest friend, she says all the time, <laughs> That's my friend. She knows where all my bones are buried. Mm. Um, you know, yes. like um, sister circles are such healing spaces, and I, it, it ain't gotta be, you know, at the spa. But shout out to the spas because that's all right too. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, yes. I, I love Listen, a spa. I'm saying, yes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but like a sister, like just getting together sometimes with your girls or mm. with your homegirl and going for a walk. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. um, just walking and talking right. sometimes is healing. Mm-hmm. Talking about what's on your heart. Sometimes, you know, we all have different living dynamics and live with different, you know, sometimes you just need to be out of your home for a little while to see some different walls and mm-hmm. to talk and to connect. Mm-hmm. When I think about um, other ways we heal, um, and I think one thing, we are so good at taking on caretaking and taking mm-hmm. care of other people and this, that, and the other. Mm-hmm. A lot of times we forget to articulate our own needs mm-hmm. and to share that. And so one thing that I think it is incredibly powerful when it happens is when we actually share with our sisters what our needs are like yes. uh, if you bring a, a group of black women together and 
you go around the room, hey, this is a challenge I'm dealing with. You gonna find a solution. Mm-hmm. That's you right. know, you mm-hmm. might it might not be for all the things and all the, but that's what we've been doing for centuries. That's how we've survived living away from our homelands. Like mm-hmm. that's how you know there there's power in that. Yes. I think investing in each other, investing mm-hmm. our time, mm-hmm. um, in investing our care and our expertise, mm-hmm. investing our money, mm-hmm. investing you know. Susus, like you know, I'm not talking about the like the little pyramid schemish susu stuff that came out a couple years ago. Like real susu and community, where a group of women it might be fishmongers mm-hmm. who got together and everybody puts in a couple dollars a month, and after the end of two months, one of the sisters gets the pot mm. to do what she needs to do, yes. and the next two months, somebody else gets the pot. Like mm-hmm. these are like. These are our ways of, but you talked about our the, our ways of knowing. Like mm-hmm. these are some of the things that we know to do. Mm-hmm. That's how we stretch a dollar. That's how we get the baby off to college. Mm-hmm. That's how we make sure baby girl got some makeup before she goes. You know, right. <laughs> the, right. and we our yeah. solutions are here when we tap into them. But sometimes we just have to speak up and say what we need. Yeah. That's right. And you know, for me. Uh, to be able to open my mouth and 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 talk about my needs, mm. you know, I, th- I think we can relate on, you know, being being um, younger and being a people pleaser. Uh, for me, a nurturer, mm-hmm. you know, I'm gonna make sure everybody is good. Right. You know, I mean, Nate, I'm listening. You know, oh, this person could use this. I'm gonna connect them. You know, and and you know, previously, you know, I'm I was the last, right, mm-hmm. to get it. But to be able to emote and and talk about what my needs are in community is is a powerful tool, and I'm learning that now at the ripe young age of 57. Look, uh, amazing. <laughs> I was like, 57 what, 50, where? Right, exactly. uh, <laughs> come on, ladies, we're doing something right. Ladies, ladies, ladies. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, you know, so when when we talk about taking care of ourselves and supporting each other um what's working Mm -hmm. and what's needed what's working um wise talk that's Mm -hmm. right wise talk is 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 working um wise itself is working um to be able to bring you know non-profit for-profit woman-led black woman-led businesses together and look to develop in a communal communal way, mm-hmm. right? Um, so we we are we win together, and we go after these challenges together. Yeah. Um, individually, we wouldn't be able to afford a brick and mortar for each of these businesses. Right. But taking this communal approach, this is you know a way in which we can assist with um, you know making uh, entrepreneurship work. Yes, you know for black. Women-led businesses, black businesses, Detroit-based businesses, yes. um, typically marginalized. You know, uh, a, a demographic that's typically typically marginalized. Um, what's what's needed for healing right mm-hmm. now? What's what's needed? You know, the first thing that just popped in my head was time. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes uh, we were talking about the dimensions of white supremacy culture, but a hyper sense of urgency is a dimension of white supremacy culture. We're we're gonna rush to do this. We're gonna rush to do this. That's we're right. rushing. To... Sometimes on, we need time just to 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 slow down and breathe. Yes. Eat, you know, like eat something before you walk out the door. That's right. mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like sometimes you just you just need a minute. Like so, I'm a, I'm gonna call out that minute. Like we that's needed. Yes. Um, I think about. Um, you know, I, I was talking about Delta Sigma Theta, you know, earlier, and mm-hmm. I think about, you know, the impact. My chapter like gave away thirty thousand dollars last year in scholarships. Wow. Like every yes. major social movement, you know, people are doing work behind the scenes. I think we we need um, the. I think we need. Uh, I'm. This isn't the word I'm. I'm using. But sometimes we move with discretion. Like mm-hmm. there are everything that we do, everything that we're involved with. Yeah. In in an era like where everything is online, everything is like. Sometimes we need, you know, discretion. Mm-hmm. Like 
you know, there's work that we do that people don't know about. I think that that is needed sometimes because mm-hmm. sometimes for a thing to bloom, yeah, you know, um, it needs it needs some cover. Yes. Um, yeah, and that's something that we can we can be each other's cover. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need resources. We need to invest um, in each other. Mm-hmm. Um, we need um, love. <laughs> yes. We need god Mm. um we need patience um, Mm. with each other and i think we have to sometimes resist this uh a lot of the things that we experience um as black folks living in america Mm -hmm. are foreign are still foreign even after these hundreds of years that we've been here um but things like working cooperatively like you know capitalism awesome or off capitalism often preaches you know autonomy but that is right. you know that is contradictory to the communities that are big mamas and they mamas mm-hmm. and they big mamas you know um i think we have to challenge and resist those things that are not of us that do not fuel us and like uh my favorite author Ayikwe arma says we have to return to the way hmm. yes Yes, Ashe, Ashe. <laughs> okay, so we're um, getting close to wrapping up. So I'm this last question. Um, if you can share healing thoughts for our sisters out there, what would it be? Any final words of encouragement or solutions? Tawana, let me start with you. Look within, trust yourself, mm-hmm. trust your gut, mm-hmm. lean into one another, um, shed some of that fear mm-hmm. that we're it's been imposed upon us to fear each other mm-hmm. and to not look to each other for guidance and care and compassion. And, you know, they say mutual aid now, but like the way that Liz was talking about our ways of being where we rely on one another to be well. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, just, you know, uh, <clears throat> we've lived through these last few years where individualizing yourself and isolating yourself was the way that you protected yourself. And so we have to work actively to come out of that Mm -hmm. um, and make sure that we understand that together and connected is how we become whole. And so, yeah, I would say that that's my uh, guidance. Love it. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth. Um, I'm going to just say this um, to all my sisters in case no one has said this to you um, in a while. You are beautiful. Yes. Um, you are valuable. There is no one on this earth exactly like you. You are powerful. Mm -hmm. Um, You are enough. You are supported. You are loved. Um, Good things are coming for you. Look out for them. Watch for your miracles. Watch for our miracles. They're coming. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, your your ladder will be greater than your past and your, your gifts will continue to make room for them or your gifts will continue to make room for you. Um, don't be afraid. That thing that has been on your heart, that vision that you've been entrusted with, trust it. Hmm. You can do it. We believe in you. Yes. We are cheering for That's, you. Yes. And we got your back. Yes. 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 And it's, it's Ashe, Ashe, and our man and our woman. Uh, there isn't anything I can add. Uh, so, if our um, audience would like to get in touch with you, Elizabeth, how may they get in touch with you? Sure. Um, so on Instagram, um, uh, Raymond W. Design or at Raymond W. Design is my Instagram handle. I think that's my Twitter handle. I'm not on Twitter that much. I'm on it though. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you can reach me that way. <laughs> okay. Okay, great. Uh, Sister Tawana, how can folks reach you? Um, I'm doing a lot more through the art org. So Petty Propolis, uh, P-E-T-T-Y-P-R-O-P-O-L-I-S mm-hmm. on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Okay. Okay. And I want to give a uh, specific and intentional thank you to, to you both uh, for joining me for this first episode of Wise Talks. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys, hey, hey, yes. hey, hey. <laughs> you guys could have been anywhere else, a multitude of places this Saturday morning, and you accepted the opportunity and our invitation to be here. 
with me and uh, on behalf of uh, WISE. So I appreciate you both. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for yes, having me. Deeply yeah. honored. Yeah, my pleasure. And so um, I could not leave the airwaves without giving a tremendous thank you to Kari Frazier yes. and the Detroit is Different studio. Uh, it is, uh, Kari has a special place in my heart. Detroit is different. Studio has a certain, a special place in my heart. And so we thank you. Wise Partnership thanks you, uh, for your support. Uh, if you guys would like to, uh, support Wise Partnership, uh, feel free to go to our website, wisepartnership.org. You can follow us on social media. Uh, we have Wise Partnership on Instagram, and we also have Wise Partnership on Facebook. Um, thank you guys for uh, tuning in, and uh, we will be back next month with some more insightful conversation with women around Detroit. Thank you, and see you next time. Innovative Social Enterprise Production.